VW Beetles started in the 1940s. We didn't get them in England until 1953. Uh, we've got a couple of cars here that are from that period. We've also got the earliest VW prototype from 1936, which we're unveiling today. Early morning at Harwich Docks, Ivan McCutcheon awaits the arrival of the star attraction of Volksworld 2005. Welcome to England. Hello. Good to meet you. After a brief tour of the car, they're on their way to Sandown Park. Good, excellent. Well, we're, we're now going to drive to Sandown for the show, um, where the VW3 will be the uh, main attraction of the show. It's uh, leaded fuel. Perfect. Perfect. Great. On we go. Friday, set up day. Inside the exhibition halls, the nerve wracking task of maneuvering the classic VWs onto the plinths is underway. Meanwhile, next door, the exhibits receive some tender loving care. However, the feverish polishing is interrupted by the arrival of Joe and Joe Gallica. More of them later. The evening before the big day. It's like how many blondes did it take but of a ten? <laughs> Time to make camp and fire up the barbie. Yes. It's over to Ivan for a brief history of some of the cars on display. The need for a larger VW saw the introduction of the Type 3 in 1962. That came out as a, a, a state car called the Squareback or Variant uh, and a Notchback Saloon car. Uh, these filled the gap in the market for a larger car from VW. Uh, they later introduced the Fastback and the Type 3 Carmen Gear. Got Ken Blomer's Type 3 Carmen Gear race car here. This is uh, the British and European record holding drag race car. 8.92 seconds to 150 mile an hour. That's a very quick car. 2005 sees the uh, 50th anniversary of the Carmen Gear. Uh, we've got various models on display here, and the Carmen Gear Owners Club of Great Britain are here supporting the 50th anniversary. This is the earliest version. It's from 1955 through to 59, and we call it the low light. It's because the headlights are slightly lower than the later models where they lifted them up. 
It's also got a slightly different nostril, but this is, say, is the original version where they first come from. This is the Cabrio version, which was brought out in 1960. It's very popular nowadays, but most of them are left-hand drive Californian imports. This is the second incarnation of the car, and it was brought out in 1962. Um, it's total radical change with the razor edge sharp lines around. It wasn't quite so successful as the original smooth flowing lines of the first car, and both models were run side by side until the mid-70s. This model had a bigger engine, a better suspension system, uh, and was much more comfortable and easy to, easy to drive. But it was the luxury model, um, but it was so expensive, it was almost as expensive as a Porsche at that same time, that uh, it didn't really catch on that well. This is my car, it's 1962 Razor Edge Carmen Gear. I've owned it for three years, but for the first year I owned it, it was being restored. The car's had a full restoration, and the most obvious change obviously, is, is the paint, um, which I think is its best feature. Um, two years ago it was debuted at Volks World Show and won Best of Show, um, and more recently um, Best Paint at the Extreme Wheel Show, plus a highly recommended trophy. Um, I've had my car the same amount of time as Joe. We really bought the two together to make one good one, which was Joe's. And what we ended up with, we've made into a race car for myself. It is actually road legal, but it doesn't see much time on the road. Uh, the engine in is a 2276, built by Ian at Wolfsburg Performance. Um, it's a Type 1 motor with 48 IDAs, uh, Magneto, all the bits that should make it go quick. Um, best time at the moment is 13.02, but I hope to be in the 12s this year. Hello. Uh, we came over from Germany and uh, just to show the car on the show. Uh, it's a 1963 convertible and it's uh, my, my friend bought it uh, eight years ago and it's been restored the last four years. They delivered from the factory to the, uh, de to the Volkswagen dealer and uh, when it was new they changed the brakes to a Porsche 356 brakes and they put in also a Porsche 356 engine. And uh, when he got the car, the brakes were still in the car, but uh, the engine was missing. Yeah, we tried to keep the car in the, in the old style. We couldn't find a 356 engine, so we put a 2.1 liter Type 1 engine in with 40 double carbs and uh, something around 140 PS, we think. And it's going close to 180 kilometers an hour. Okay, um, back to 89, you kind of started, it started in 2001. It was um, an internet forum thread on uh, Machine Seven's website, just basically asking where all the old show cars might be. We had a good response. Um, we had um, 25 cars at the first bug jam, and uh, they're all show cars. At the moment, the uh, register is at 130 um, cars, and that's like anything from um, cow look to buggies, barhas, split screens, and anything that's been well known in the scene since pre-1999. Um, this is a typical back to 89 um, car. Came out in 1990 and won Utah's Beautiful VW. The car was last seen on the show circuit in 1994. Steve's um, been working hard on this car since 1995 uh, 96. It's been uh, repainted, all new metal put on it. Mods on the car include the target top, where it fully removes, and removable door tops as well that come in with a string clip. You can move into the rear of the car. Um, you can see that the target bumper is on the back here and incorporated a single blade bumper with the, uh, the steel on the top. It's contoured around to the shape of the car and incorporates these Targa rear lights here. Moving up, you've got a rear script with the Targa spelling out the name of the car. The doors are suicide doors. Very hard modification to do on a VW Beetle. The doors have also got their hinges removed, so that's all hidden away. The car's won many, many trophies, been um, featured all around the world in magazines in the US and also in the UK and Japan. All good fun. I come here to party, basically.
subscribe. Good friendship, a few beers. How come the sand down the party? Cool. Yeah. The Type 2 or VW camper van is probably the most popular camper van of all time. We have a whole floor of camper vans for uh, the visitors this weekend. That's downstairs. When you're judging a Type 2, you've got to look at the whole van, every area of the van, from the wheel wells to the, the quality of the finish of the paint. If the bus has been fully restored, you have to look at absolutely everything, even the tread on the tyres, even the choice of the tread on the tyres, all the detail on the re-chroming. It takes a long time. I've got about 20 buses to do, um, which is going to take forever, so uh, let's get started. What we're looking for with a vehicle like this, this van has had a full restoration and we're not just talking about painting, it's been, everything's been put on it, everything's been replaced, down to the bumper trims, down to the beauty trim all around the vehicle and the, you, you've got to look for things like it fitting flush against the bodywork, these fitting flush against the bodywork. I mean if you look underneath the van you can see the amount of detail that has gone into this. This van would have probably cost to buy as an unrestored vehicle, probably somewhere in the region of about 12 to 13,000 pounds. And then to get it to like this, you're going to spend probably another 20,000 pounds. Within the VW scene, um, in the classic VW scene, vans have really taken over. Um, there was a time when it was all Beatles, but now um, everybody seems to want a bus. Uh, I think the statistics are at the moment that out of all the classic cars that were imported into the UK this year, last year, 70% um, of them were Volkswagens, classic Volkswagens. Out of that 70%, 60% were buses. The Split Screen Van Club in the last two years has doubled in membership. Half of the membership have left-hand drive vans and half of the membership have right-hand drives. Initially, they were all right-hand drives, but because so many are being ported into the UK, it's half and half now. It's just, it's, it's progressing, it's developing. The club is just wide open for every kind of character to join. Ivan's on walkabout to meet some of the VW clubs. Hello. Hello. You having a good weekend? Yeah. What club are you with? With the Dub Addicts. From? Guildford. Guildford. Right, and how many cars have you got down here today? We got five down here today. So, um, when did you get up here? Um, eight o'clock yesterday morning. Really? Oh, I'm Mel. Hi, Ivan. You're from the Southern June Buggy Club. That's correct. Um, how long has the, the club been going? This is our sixth year now. Six years. Yeah. And how many members have you got? Uh, paid up members at the moment is 253. Really? Although since wow. we've been going, it's um, 564, believe it or not. 564 yeah. members? That's wow. since we were set up. <laughs> we're based predominantly in the south of England, where most of our members come from. But um, equally, we do cover the whole of the, the UK. We have a club meet once a month, first Wednesday of the month in Rygate in Surrey. Colin, what club are you with? Greenhearts. Greenhearts. And what's the story with your club? Uh, basically, it's just a club with fast street motors, drag motors. And we sort of just have show condition cars with big motors, fast gearboxes. Um, pretty exclusive. You've got to run a 1499. Four four well, on, on a quarter mile? Yeah. Right. Trusty, trusty be allowed to be in the club. So, uh, I mean, do you have like an engine builder that works yeah, with basically you? Basically, Pete Roberts at Funkin' Blitz. Right, um, yeah. It's pretty much done all the engine work, all the cars. Uh, fitted all, all the gauges, electrics, everything really, the turbos, the gas motors, everything. It does the whole thing. Um, okay. Kind of organises and runs the club. Ably assisted by Joe Eichmann, Ivan finally reveals the star of the show. It's the first time this car has ever been in this country. The amazing thing is, Joe Eichmann from Volkswagen drove this car here with me in it as his mirror man because it has no <laughs> mirrors or back window it's the prototype of the vw beetle so if you've got a beetle this is the great great grandfather of your car this is the original vw beetle joe are you ready yes i am excellent uh, finally can we have a massive massive round of applause for this man for bringing this car here Mr. 
this is a prototype, one of three prototypes were built in uh, 1936. And this is a replica built in 1999. This car has only one windscreen wiper because it wasn't necessary at that time to have more windscreen wipers and it was enough for testing the cars. And uh, for example, the indicators here, you see, I can show you. It works like this. And uh, later on in the 60s, we have the other indicators, you know. Another feature is that this car has uh, no real window. And that was because of cooling the engine. They need this here to get the air through to cool the engine. Later on, when they changed the engine a little bit, it was um, possible to make a window. You know this, we call it Brezelfenster, the, um, the double D window. And this door, for example, is going like this way, you can see here. And uh, when Porsche was in America, uh, he saw that the majority of the cars have a door going the other way. And he decided to produce a Beetle, like the American cars, where they go, the door goes like this. The maximum speed is about um, 60 miles. I do not want to go faster. <laughs> I had the car for more than 22 years. This particular car was used for the Herbie film promotion uh, by Tiff Nidell. We took the car around the country to, towards Manchester, Liverpool, and uh, during the tsunami time, I decided this could be the best car to raise some money to the orphan kids in Sri Lanka. Uh, so I donated this car to, through Volkswagen uh, to raise the funds, roughly about 30,000 if it's possible for the course to do a little bit more and hoping to make an orphanage for the orphan kids on this bad disaster we had around the world. Yeah, well, last year's um, best of show car was my silver square back. Um, I did it really more as a sort of piece of art, as a design study, complete new chassis, uh, fitted a Porsche Carrera GT2 motor and uh, transmission in it every component new, lots of carbon fibre and um, it's a really really quick car but it looks good too you know and obviously the judges thought so because it, it won best of show. So as you can see I really do like squarebacks and um, this year I, I, I've done something different it's uh, kind of a resto cow look, very classic lines, roof rack, uh, full interior, foosh wheels, I've got Porsche disc brakes and stuff all round on it and uh, I'm just going to enjoy thrashing this one around the lanes, you know. The guys at Type 3 Detectives um, did all the work on the car, and it was like a last-minute thing, really, and we said, right, let's go for it, we'll make sand down again. It's about ten weeks in total, the whole thing took from start to finish. It was orange ten weeks ago, this car. It's been bare metal, stripped out completely, new old stock wings and, and stuff fitted, uh, and, yeah, they did really, done really well. I'm real pleased with it. So today I've been asked to judge uh, race cars and car and gears. For obvious reasons, I'm not allowed to judge any classes that I've got cars entered in. And it's a uh, 100 points check, basically bodywork and paint, uh, interior, engine and underside and so forth. And it's just a case of going around the car and, uh, and uh, marking the points out. I never total the points up, I let them do that in the office. 
so I've no idea which one's won. I just literally score them. I never look at the cards beforehand either because I don't want any prejudice or anything like that. You literally judge them on the day and on their own merits. So we'll start with uh, the bodywork and paint on uh, Bernard Newbury's race car. Okay, with a lot of cars you see, they've uh, hung the doors and they haven't hung them quite straight, whereas this one, as you can see, the gap should be perfectly even all the way around and across and down on the B-pillar. I always check stuff like that, you know? It's a 1958 Australian car. I've had it five years now. Wanted a really good solid car to start with, and this was the one. It's a replica of a 70s drag car by a company called MP. Wanted to do it in the uh, style of the old 70s Gasser. The motor is a 2276 um, with IDAs, IDA carbs. It's about 200 horsepower. Hoping to do about a 12 second pass down a quarter mile. The panels on the car are um, made out of fiberglass. The wings, the bonnet, the deck lid, and the doors. So it's quite a light car. I think it weighs about um, 800 kilograms. It's running on a set of wheels from 1970s called BRMs. Um, the original magnesium wheels. Um, and it's running on seven inch slicks. A friend of mine, uh, Neil Malliard, who runs a company called Pro Signing, did all the sign writing. Um, it's real gold uh, leaf metal flake um, on the numbers. I also got a, a good friend that I've known for a long time, Bernard Newbury, who's done a lot of interiors on the scene. He's a bit of a perfectionist, so I knew he was the guy to have. I got his um, to do all the uh, detailing, the wiring and the plumbing, and um, also the interior. I knew the only people that could actually like do it how I wanted was uh, the boys at the paint box. And they've done a good job. I'm really pleased with it. Right, today we're trying to break the record for how many people we can get into this Beetle. Uh, last time I think they had 88 and we're going to see if we can beat it, which I'm sure we can. Lots of room in these old things, definitely. <laughs> so here we go, it's the first people going into the park. See them people inside, they're loving it. We are loving this. We've got room for loads that we can do. So take your photos now because I reckon it's all going to collapse in a minute. Are we there? Great! Round of applause, everyone. We've got the lights in. I think what if you if you can find out in single file. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 25, 26, 27, 36, 37, 38, 39, 
And now for some, the most important part of the show, the prize giving. One, two, seven, seven. Do you recognise that number anyone? And the name is Mr. Thomas Lubber. Congratulations, you are now the proud owner of Herbie. Big round of applause everyone, thank you. I'm, I'm a bit shell-shocked, to be honest with you. I couldn't believe it when I heard my name uh, over the tannoy, and it, just, uh, yeah, it hasn't really sunk in yet. <laughs> and I was saying, just as they um, pulled the ticket out, I said, I never win anything, and I was joking, saying, and the winner is, and still saying my name, and, and then I heard it. It was, yeah, unbelievable. The next award is for Best Paintwork. We featured this car last year, um, the paintwork is still probably one of the best we've ever seen. It's Velocerazor, the Carmen gear down there, the drag racer one. Well done, John. Well done. After winning last year, I didn't really expect to win this year, but it's uh, another good award for the paint box and their crew um, after a year, and it's still looking this good. Right, we're now into the serious stuff, the big trophies, visitors' choice. Every woman that's come here today has fallen in love with this vehicle. Pink and white Samba down at the end, owned by the Prattleys. Visitor's Choice, 2005. We love your bus. I'm just absolutely amazed. I didn't expect to win anything. I came here just thinking, you know, it was advertising the van, advertising the company. And um, I know that it's had a really good response from all the girls, because it's so pink. And um, I was just really, really, like stoked, I couldn't believe it. I was just amazed when they called it out. So it's a really good show. The best original car we here has been voted as John Pink's Green Cabaret on the Pink. I'm very happy that I've won. I'm very pleased. It took a lot of work to get it back to its original condition, and this year is the 50th anniversary of the Carmen Gear, and I should be going to Osnabrück for the meetings in June and July. Next award is for Best Race Car. Travis Ryder's Intrinsic Record. This car is my blow. Right, the next one is Best Resto Car. It's the red convertible people just over there. Uh, whoever owns that red convertible, if they could come over, that'd be great. Right. Oh, here he is. Excellent. Sasha Hunt. Excellent. He's uh, come from Frankfurt. Yeah, he's driven all the way from Frankfurt with it. Um, no, it's a fantastic car. But unfortunately, there can only be one best of show. Or should that be fortunately for Travis and the inch <laughs> Paint box, pro shine, Bernard Newbury, all the people, Java. <laughs> uh, I couldn't have done it really without my dad <laughs> and his checkbook. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's creaking still. And, and the checkbook. <laughs> but it's, it is worth it, it is worth yeah. it, definitely. Yeah. I'd do it again. <laughs> The 2005 Volkswagen show is over. Uh, it's probably been the busiest one we've ever had. Uh, we've had some amazing cars on show. Uh, we're now just packing up and uh, I can finally get some sleep.
He made it. Nice show, nice cars. See you next year. Thank mm -hmm. you.